What a wonderful way to begin our service of worship this morning. What a treat. Thank you so much, Deb. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome um, in your different homes uh, to this virtual service of worship, which is no less real. We are so glad that you he are here with us and we want you to know no matter where you happen to be and uh, no matter where you happen to be on your journey, you are welcome here. We want to start the way we love to start worship and uh, for this I'm going to ask you if you're able to unmute yourselves as I say, God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. good. All right, let's try it again. It doesn't matter if we're in unison or not. God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. good. Amen and amen. Well, I invite you to remute yourselves now. Um, and uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to start with the same song that we've been singing um, and doing the motions to these past couple of uh, uh, past few Sundays. It's called Gathered Here. Now, let me show you the motions again, just briefly uh, to run through them. And move my microphone a little here. Okay. So they go like this. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit, draw near. All right, and we'll sing it through twice. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw And now let's take a moment to enjoy a bit of a conspiracy, for that is what happens when we breathe together. We conspire. We breathe with one another. So first, um, let's take a deep breath in and breathe in the love of God. Now breathe it out into the world. I know we need to do this more than once, so let's breathe the love of God in. Deep, deep breath, filling you completely. And now let it out into the world. And now I invite you to join with me in a spirit of prayer. Loving and fruitful God, we gather in your presence in our separate homes, yet united in our thirst for good news. Open our minds and hearts to receive your word. Help us to create room for your wildly extravagant grace. Give us eyes to see new possibilities and ears to hear your still speaking voice. Come and let the seeds of your love take root in the soil of our lives. 
Show us how we can blossom and flourish no matter what challenges we may face. Quiet our distractions and help us to be here now with you and with each other. Amen. And now I invite you to light your candle. Well, when we gather to worship in this wonderful um, online gathering, we have the opportunity to have something to eat, whether it's our breakfast or it's a snack that we're having because we ate earlier. And when we do that, this is part of how we're breaking open um, the bread of life, the word of God, and uh, sharing uh, together in a meal. So I invite you to join with me um, in a repeat after me prayer. Loving, fruitful God. Loving, fruitful God. We thank you for the gift of food. We thank you for the gift of food. Bless what we are about to eat. Bless what we are about to eat. So that it nourishes us. So that it nourishes us. Bless what we are about to drink. Bless what we are, are about to drink. So it satisfies our thirst. So it satisfies our thirst. Keep us mindful. Keep us mindful. Of all who labored. Of all who labored. To give us this food. To give us this food. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people together say, Amen. Amen. All right. And what is the one thing that we love to say whenever we are together to enjoy a meal? That is, hold up your food if you've got it handy. Grateful. All right. Hopefully you all said grateful too. I didn't make that clear. I apologize. Okay. Uh, for our first scripture lesson, as we continue now, while we're enjoying um, a snack or a meal, uh, we're going to listen uh, to a reading from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. And I understand uh, that Joe was able to recruit um, uh, Jean and Judith. Let's uh, make sure Jean and Judith are able to... Uh, be heard. Can you go ahead and, and speak, Jean and Judith? Ah, well, we might not quite have sound uh, for them. Uh, Reverend Kara, do you have a Bible handy? Yes, I do. Would you uh, be real willing to read it? And, and it may be that uh, Judith and Jean were not able to get their sound to work just yet. Um, what is the passage? Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. 55, 10 through 13. That is correct. Can you hear me? Yes. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. 
hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Now, our second, pardon me, our second lesson uh, comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. And uh, here we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, and then we're going to skip to verses 18 through 23, because verses 18 through 23 kind of offer an explanation of the parable we'll hear in verses 1 through 9. So, uh, Joe is unmuted. Wonderful. So here we begin with Matthew chapter 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them, told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Now, our hymn of preparation uh, this morning is, O God in Whom All Life Begins, and I am going to pull that up uh, as soon as I can. There we go. And uh, whenever you're ready, Deb, we'd love to sing. <laughs>
So when we were in the thick of the initial shutdown, I, I had this idea that I needed to do something to focus some of my, my anxious energy on. And I thought, huh, maybe this is the year I need to start gardening. And so amongst other things, I, I spoke with a member of our congregation who's been gardening much of his life and has some knowledge on this. And then I started going and looking for perennial plants that were on sale and finding places I wanted to put them in my yard. And then I decided, ooh, I want to grow some vegetables. Now that was around the time where meat was hard to come by at the store. And I thought, well, who knows? Maybe vegetables will become hard to come by too. So wouldn't it be great if I could grow my own? So I built a, a two different raised beds. I got a bajillion different um, containers. I bought gobs and gobs of raised bed soil and potting soil. And, and I got lots of seedlings and lots of seeds. And I got really excited for all of this. And of course, I also established putting up a fence around the area where I was putting my little garden uh, so that I didn't have to worry about other creatures who might want to share um, in whatever the garden produced. Now, I'm going to try and share a picture with you. Let's see if this works. Um, uh, okay, so this is part of my garden and you can see here's the raised bed. We got a, a zucchini plant here. We've got some bean plants. Uh, we've got more bean plants over here. Asian lettuce, some arugula, carrots, uh, Swiss chard. We got some beets, um, a few different kinds of flowering plants. That's supposed to be a nasturtium, hasn't been happy. And you'll notice this zucchini plant has a flower. Well, recently I discovered that zucchini plants have male and female flowers and the female are the only ones that produce the zucchini well i've been worried i was very worried at first because the flowers that this got they all fell off and nothing happened and i thought oh my gosh something must be really wrong and at the same time many of my other uh plants were were getting rather peaked to say the least they were kind of yellow uh the leaves some were seemed to have stunted growth I was very concerned, so I spent multiple trips back and forth trying to consult with different gardening specialists um, and uh, have tried a variety of different kinds of organic fertilizer. And then I finally broke down and bought some that wasn't organic, but that a guy who apparently has, has had champion uh, gardening, like he's, he's been in competitive gardening. I didn't know there was such a thing, but he's won contests. And so he has lots of experience. And he was telling me about this particular kind that while it isn't organic, he said, it's really going to help those plants that are having trouble putting up green leaves and get some of that growth going. But needless to say, I've discovered gardening is not as simple as it might seem. And that simply putting a seed in soil does not ensure, number one, that the seed is going to grow, and number two, even if it does grow, that it will produce fruit. So having all of this in mind, when I encounter the story of the sower, the parable of the sower, makes me hear the story with new, with new insight, if you will. Because before I thought, well, it seemed a little crazy to me that a sower would throw seed every which way anyway, because I knew that back in, the, in Jesus' day, it's not like you could go to Adam's and buy packets of seed. Um, you had to save your seed. It was a process. After each harvest, you had to retain some of the seed that would be used for the next year. And depending on how good the harvest was, you might have you know, sufficient seed, and sometimes you might have to eat the seed. So, so it was a not, not the kind of thing that you were going to just throw about willy-nilly. And yet the sower is willing not just to put the, the seed in places where one can expect that it would grow. The sower isn't worried about what kind of soil preparation might need to be in, involved. Uh, not looking for even the most natural and organic of fertilizer that, that would have been available to Jesus in, in his day. Um, you know, the leavings of other animals. 
uh, and and not even worrying about whether or not the ground has has been fallow, which is another way to sort of increase soil fertility. No, this this sower is throwing seed all over the place and not concerned as to whether or not it's landing in a place where it could grow. And what's more, I've discovered that a lot of seed doesn't do so well if it just is sitting on top of soil. In fact, there's a technique. Different seeds need different depths of soil. And I, as I have learned the hard way, if you don't get it deep enough when it needs to be, then then the, the plant shoots up and the thing it, it, it's, it's so scraggly and the, the, the seed and therefore the roots aren't deep enough that the thing flops over in the, in the next rainstorm and, and well, that's that. Uh, and at the same time, if you put it too deep, then the, the seed will have a really hard time finally making it and breaking through the soil. So this sower seems like a pretty impractical, certainly not the standard farmer or even gardener that most of us would think of. And I've been kind of wondering why that might be. Because the sower doesn't pause to test the soil for what nutrients it has or lacks. It doesn't wait for the rain to come and soften the ground or, or study the area for what kind of climate it has or, or even pay attention to what direction the wind typically blows. The sower in this parable isn't cautious nor is he or she strategic. No, this sower is a high risk sower, relentlessly throwing seed every which way, as if everywhere it might fall could be the perfect place for growth to happen. And even though there are things which impede the seed's growth in different places, whether that's the, the crows that come and the birds that eat things, or whether that's the thorns or whether it falls on rocky ground, the sower still gets a yield that is beyond amazing. Threefold would have been a blessing. Sevenfold would have been terrific. And by that fold, we mean that many times what would have been expected for the yield. For example, I discovered that zucchini can, from one seed, yield as many as 40 zucchinis in that one plant, which is why some people only plant one zucchini because they know they're gonna get so many of these things that there's only so much zucchini bread that they can make and only so many uh, stuffed zucchini recipes that they can utilize all the zucchini for. But that is an that is an expected amount of yield. Now imagine if that one zucchini seed yielded not threefold, not sevenfold or tenfold because tenfold would be 400 zucchinis, but 30, 60, or 100 fold. We're talking 4,000 zucchinis. That is huge. And this is meant in, in Jesus' parable to strike us as an incredible, miraculous abundance. So big as to be almost unimaginable. And in the case of zucchini, to be a bit intimidating to say the least. But that isn't the only part of our reading. It isn't only about how God, perhaps we could see the sower as God, but how the sower acts. It's also about how the people who hear the parable, how it strikes them. And what I'm, I'm really, focused on when I was reading this text, what, what really kind of sparkled or, or, or stood out for me was this uh, verse that says, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word, who hears the good news, he hears the message from God, hears what God intends for the world, hears it and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. I like to think of that word, understands, which is about gaining insight, because it is linked also to being fruitful. That what Jesus is saying here is when the message of God is able 
to reach us when we not only understand it and receive insight from it, but when we live it, that's when we are able to yield this incredible, truly abundant uh, harvest. But you know what I'm keenly aware of that this parable isn't just about God's acts, which are wastefully extravagant. It's not concerned only with ensuring the seed and the message of God and the dream God has for the world and the intention God wants for all of us to live into. It's not only about having that be spread in as many places as possible. It's also about how we are to act to be open to what God wants to share with us, to, to make room in our minds and hearts and to hear fully what this message is all about so we can live it out. The sower, after all, calls us to the essential work of doing our part in spreading seeds of kindness solidarity and justice without getting caught up in analyzing whether the seeds are actually taking root. Let's face it, it's really tempting to think our own individual actions can't make much of a difference, especially when we're faced with the choking weeds of all that's broken in our society. We know that our criminal justice system locks up more people than any other country in the world. Over 2.1 million Americans are imprisoned in the US. And that's not even talking about any people who are coming to our country seeking asylum. Our employer-based healthcare system leaves millions without access to affordable medical care. Our public education system concentrates low-income communities of color in underfunded and failing schools, while prosperous white families get access to well-resourced, technologically advanced, and arts-enriched schools. Our food system relies on massive factory farms that require toxic chemicals and massive volumes of water to sustain monocultural growth of single crops in vast hundreds of acre fields that deplete the soil and poison the environment at the expense of small family farms. Meantime, countless small rural communities and inner city neighborhoods are food deserts with little to no access to fresh, healthy food. Our economic system is dependent on all of us buying more than we need and ensuring those who do the most essential work, particularly in this time of the coronavirus, are required to uh, do the most essential work required are at risk to their own health and yet receive low wages, while executives get paid millions to work from the safety of their mansions. Our banking system makes capital more accessible to whites than people of color. Our housing system is based on profits over people and privileges whites over people of color. Then there are the sharp thorns of political divisions that poke at people's fears and distrust of difference and make it so hard for us to work together on some of the challenges that we face. Sharp rocks of racism form barriers and stumbling blocks to keep people in their place. And the well-worn and familiar path of white privilege and whiteness as the norm or standards resists anyone making any detours or breaking new ground. So we know all of these things are true, and we know how deeply discouraged we can become, and how seeing what is broken and what is hurting in our society can make us feel like no matter what seed we scatter, nothing will actually germinate. But that, my friends, is why we need to hear the parable of the sower anew. 
and recognize it's not about being concerned with what type of soil, what kind of ground the seed falls on. We don't have to worry about what other sort of predatory um, uh, systems may be in place that might want to gobble up the good that we do. We simply need to be willing to scatter the seed. We need to be willing to be extravagant in our acts of kindness and mercy, our willingness to forgive, our capacity to dream bold dreams for what with God's help can be possible in our world. We are not the ones who are responsible for the growth. We simply have to get the seed in a place where it has a chance to sprout. So what are some of the ways that we can scatter these seeds? Well, pretty much any of us has opportunities just as individuals to, to offer loving kindness to both friends and strangers, to family who may drive us nuts if we're feeling like we're stuck inside with them much of the time, and also to people that, that we don't know or that we might be tempted to look at suspiciously. But there's also the sort of collective power of all of us sowing seeds of justice. That's what gives us the capacity to yield something abundant. It's too easy for us to say, you know, I know racism persists, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna change. It just seems like it's stuck and that that's the way it is. And no matter what I try, it just will persist. But when we act together, when we gain deeper insights to why racism persists and what our part might be in allowing that to continue, when we recognize the, the steps that we can take collectively to address some of these other broken things in our society, whether it's housing or it's, it's the legal system or it's our practice of locking people up as if that's the only way to restore the harm that was created. Just this week, I heard um, a story on, on the radio of um, how a school system had decided to try, instead of automatically suspending um, high school students that were getting into trouble, trying instead a restorative justice practice and, and how that made a difference. And, and it kind of broke some of the prison, the, the school to prison pipeline that can exist in many communities. And the person who was talking about this shared a specific story of this young woman, I guess, I think she was around 16 years old. Her name was Mercedes. And she was about to get into a major fight with uh, some other people that it turns out she had known for much of her life. And fortunately, a school counselor saw that this was about to erupt and stepped in and managed to get not only Mercedes, but, but the other people that were involved in this potential fight to sit down together and talk each one from their own perspective of what was happening that would lead up to this fight. And as it turns out, we find out that Mercedes had stolen a pair of shoes. And needless to say, the others wanted revenge. But the reason she stole the pair of shoes is because she needed to get money for her mother so her mother could take a drug test so that potentially she could prove the mother could prove she was in fact clean and sober and then be able to have children who had been taken away from her return to her. Now, the other young women that were involved in this, while they didn't excuse what Mercedes had done, they didn't ask her to pay them back. They simply wanted from her the opportunity for her to acknowledge what she had done was wrong and to promise that she would behave in a trustworthy manner in the future. Something amazing happened. Not only did Mercedes realize a few years later that that was 
the event that helped her to stay in school and continue and actually graduate, but also it began to open her eyes that maybe there could be another way to address what she felt as an overwhelming need that the only way that she knew to deal with was to steal something. And this restorative justice process also revealed, well, what's wrong with a society that a woman who needs a drug test in order to have access back to her children would need to find resources to pay for that if she's already on the edge economically and that her daughter would feel the only way to solve that is by stealing somebody else's shoes. All of this is to say, folks, that there are ways, there are ways that we can be involved in the healing work of scattering these incredible seeds of a different way of looking at one another, seeds of kindness, seeds of restorative justice, seeds of working to dismantle racism and its power and grip in our society. And we don't have to worry about whether or not those seeds are going to germinate. We simply have to be willing to join God in casting them about every which way, as if there are always plenty more wherever that comes from. Truly, we don't have to be responsible for the growth we simply have to get the seed out in a world that needs this good news. We have to be the ones who understand what Jesus is talking about, who receive insight from this story, and in turn are willing to live our lives in such a way that our very lives speak of the world God intends for all of us to enjoy. Thanks be to God who is a sower, who is extravagant in his love and grace and blessing with each of us. Amen. And now Deb is going to um, play a, a brief selection to provide us uh, with some a moment to reflect. Thank you so much, Deb. And now we come to the time in our worship service where we 
we lift up to God those joys and concerns that we have and and we we pray for ourselves for our community and for our world when we come time uh, to sharing our own prayers uh, I will pause the recording so that um, we can maintain confidentiality uh, but in the meantime I invite you to join with me now in a spirit of prayer. Oh, loving, fruitful God, we are so grateful that you don't wait for circumstances to be perfect or ideal before you cast your love and blessing upon us every which way. You know how our fears can confine us in sharp thorns that block out the bright sunshine of hope and of possibility. You know the way that our assumptions about what you can do within us and through us can inhibit our own growth and keep us from flourishing. You know that we often engage in activities that seem so needful, but actually just gobble up our energy and make us feel dried up and barren inside. So quench our thirst for a life of meaning and purpose with the living waters of your word. Let the seeds of your reign of justice and joy take root deep within our hearts and our imaginations. Empower us to trust in your capacity to bring forth bountiful good that surpasses all expectation and fills us with wonder. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, we also want to lift up in prayer those places that are in need of the seeds of justice to be sown, places where people feel lost or forsaken, for those who are incarcerated, and for those who are newly re-entering society. May they know that you are with them, that they are precious in your sight, and help all of us to create opportunities for healing all that might was broken that led to that person be in prison or be released from prison. Help us too, God, to create a society in which those who have paid their debt can enter fully and can be uh, full citizens, not only able to vote, but able to find work at a living wage. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, when we grow discouraged, when we are convinced that any small thing we might do does not really make any difference, remind us that sometimes the small things are what matter most. We thank you for the opportunity yesterday to to have Sharing Sunday on our front lawn for the neighbors we were able to speak with and, and learn how their lives are going and offer a, a delicious grilled chicken sandwich and, and food to take with them and toiletries uh, that can be of help. We thank you for, for the opportunity not just to make a difference, but for others to make a difference in our lives through the relationships we are forging. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, we pray for those in our community that are still hungry, that long for a place uh, that is safe shelter to call home. We pray for our elected leaders uh, who have so many responsibilities not the least of which to care for the most vulnerable in our society. Bless them with your wisdom and help them to make good choices 
that do in fact lift up the last and least. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now Holy One, we share a name aloud those joys and concerns, those opportunities for giving thanks and those things which, those situations which may be in need of your healing touch. And so we pause to take time now to name our joys and concerns. Holy One, we commend to you all for whom we pray, rejoicing that your power working within us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Help us now to receive fresh insight and a new inspiration from those very familiar words Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, beloveds, um, now we, we have an opportunity for us to reflect both on on the many different ways that God has showered blessings upon us and ensure that we always have plenty to share by sharing some of our own gifts of time, talent, and treasure um, with the ministry to benefit the ministries of our church. Um, one thing is that uh, you can make a contribution, a financial contribution to the church. You can write a check and mail it to the church office at 269 Mill Street in Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. You can go to our website, www.opentogod.org, and uh, click on the PayPal donation button to be taken to our secure PayPal for Nonprofits uh, donation page. And of course, you can also um, donate if you happen to have online banking uh, through your online banking program. But one of the other things we like to do is to think about how we can take what we've heard today and put it into action in the world. And certainly I'm sure each one of you could think of particular acts of kindness and generosity that you might be able to engage in this week, but there's also some collective action that we can potentially do together. Not only can we uh, begin the work of um, understanding uh, racism's power and presence and all the things that perpetuate it in our society by educating ourselves. Um, we've provided a variety of resources through our e-news um, and you may have noticed that in fact the Poughkeepsie Public Library has created a um, anti-racism starter kit and within there it has guides for adults, for teenagers, for children and for parents and educators. And here's something really wonderful. If you happen to be a Poughkeepsie Public Library District member, um, have a card with them, you can go onto their website and you can actually watch some films through a program that they have that they make available to library card holders that allows for live streaming of documentaries. But even if you can't do that, there are several films that I've shared that you can access for free on YouTube. And we put a couple of new ones up, uh, including one called White Like Me, that is really a very compelling film. So I invite you to take some time and take a look at that um, in, in the e-news that we sent this Friday. And finally, we're going to be uh, starting um, a congregation-wide um, anti-racism uh, uh, education series, uh, but that won't start until August, so you can do a little pre-work now. And um, if you can't for whatever reason, that's okay, but I hope you will join us when we begin that um, next month. In the meantime, let us consider and maybe write, take some notes and write down all the different ways that 
God calls on us to share what we have and to scatter seeds of kindness, justice, mercy, forgiveness, and love in a world that is eager to have those things grow and flourish. And we can do that while we listen to a lovely offertory. I apologize. Um, my sound kind of went out towards the end there, so I didn't realize that beautiful um, song had come to a conclusion. Well, now I would like to invite all of you uh, to join in our unison. Um, oops, that didn't work. Let's try that again. To join in our unison prayer of dedication. There we are. Let us pray together. With great thanksgiving, we humbly and gladly present our offerings of time, talent, and treasure to you, O God. We rejoice in your lavish generosity, for you extravagantly bestow upon us more than enough to share. When we encounter the rocky ground of difficult challenges, help us to return to you for nourishment. Free us from the prickly thorns of anger, distrust, or fear that can sharply divide us. Teach us to cultivate fertile ground for transformative growth. May our words and actions demonstrate the fruitfulness of kindness, forgiveness, and generosity. We dedicate our gifts and our lives to sowing the seeds of restorative justice, that you may yield an abundant harvest of healing and joy. We pray in the name of Jesus, our gardener and sower of life. Amen. And now we have some time uh, for some announcements. And uh, first thing I wanna say is Good news, we received a grant, you may have seen this in the e-news, but we received a grant from the New York Conference um, to help uh, us with our sharing, what had been sharing Sunday when I applied for the grant, but anyway, is now sharing Saturday uh, to help with that ministry. And it was with using some of those funds that we were able to go uh, to Essie's Restaurant, which is a black owned business, and ask if they could make for us 50 uh, sandwiches uh, to go for that for those who came to sharing Saturday yesterday to be able to have a meal to go and oh my gosh they he did in fact uh, the chef at, at, at Essie's restaurant which is in the Mount Carmel area of Poughkeepsie made amazingly delicious grilled chicken sandwiches and I only know that because the fabulous people who were uh, responsible. Brandon Walker is his name. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Deb. Uh, uh, I was able to, in fact, uh, enjoy one of those. And oh, Mary Jallo is singing Essie's praises as well. Um, and that the owner, uh, who's also the chef, is top. So, so in any case, uh, I just mentioned that because if you aren't aware of them, they are a wonderful restaurant. They have a, a limited menu right now um, during uh, the current uh, COVID situation, but you can certainly get uh, a takeout and uh, let's do what we can. Uh, that's one of the ways we can uh, sow seeds of justice is to support uh, black owned 
uh, businesses in our local community. Um, others uh, who would like to share an announcement uh, today. Yes, Daphne. Hi, I'll uh, piggyback on that. I got a text this morning from Denise reporting that 38 boxes were given out yesterday during Sharon Saturday. Oh, that's um, awesome. She wanted to thank everybody for the contributions and they all enjoyed everything. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, so that was 38 boxes of non-parcel food items mm -hmm. that were distributed. Right. It's really awesome. Um, and we're so grateful to everybody who uh, contributed those. And also um, many toiletries were handed out as well. And um, it was just a really delightful thing. I happened to be there um, to see some of our wonderful neighbors uh, that we have seen with regularity in the past. So, um, so that's terrific. Other announcements people may have. Cheryl, do you have an announcement? No, okay. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget we have our Wednesday morning uh, book group. Uh, we're uh, reading through the book, um, which has been really inspirational actually, and a lot of fun to read. Wonderful sense of humor and great stories. Tattoos on the heart. The Power of Boundless Compassion by Gregory Boyle. And you know, you don't have to have a book to be part of the group because we read it out loud and, and then we talk about it afterwards. You also don't have to do any advanced reading, which for some of us is, is quite hel helpful uh, in the midst of busy schedules. Uh, other announcements, that's Wednesday at 10, by the way. Anyone else? All right. Well, uh, not uh, seeing anyone else, um, let us join in our closing hymn, You Are Salt for the Earth, O People. Let me pull that up just a minute. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Deb. Hey, and I'm so sorry. There's a lot of neighbors using a lot of power tools this morning outside, and it's very distracting for me. Hopefully you can't hear it. <laughs> Well, beloveds, I did think of a, one announcement I had forgotten, and, and, and that is when I was at the church yesterday, it became clear to me that since we didn't have a spring work day, there are plenty of opportunities for those, whether you have a green thumb or not, if you have some 
clippers or you have some gardening gloves with which to pull weeds, it would be really great if we could um, create an opportunity for people to come. Uh, you can certainly come on your own. I don't know that we have to all have a group because after all, we're all trying to keep appropriate distance from one another these days. Um, but you know, there are, especially if you are aware of what is weed and what isn't, or in general, you know, I can recognize dandelion leaves if nothing else. Um, it would be great if, uh, if some people would be willing to volunteer for that. And you can certainly uh, reach out to me or reach out to Tracy in the church office or even uh, reach out. Um, I'm putting you on the spot now, Cindy. Uh, Cindy is our, our new uh, uh, president of the Board of Trustees. Uh, so you could also reach out to her. But in any case, I hope we'll have some people who might be willing to do that to spruce things up a little bit. You know, when we're not at a place with regularity, then we don't realize how it might need our love and attention. So uh, I'm hoping that some folks might be willing to do that. Well, in the meantime, may you have been filled with new ideas, new insights. May you have been fed and nourished as we worship together this morning. May you be open this week to ways that both you can scatter and sow those seeds of kindness and restorative justice, of love and of, of concern for others. And may you also see how you can turn to God when you feel discouraged, when those sharp thorns of fear and anxiety or even of division and break down in relationships when they poke at you. May you find God is right there with you to pull those thorns out and to heal those wounds. And may you also know that God is a God of abundant gifts that never cease to yield a powerful harvest. Just think of the zucchini and the blessing of the earth maker, the pain bearer, and the life giver go with you this day and always. Amen.